who gets financial aid. Number one, they're going to be looking at your academic potential. So they're going to look at your GRE scores, they're going to look at your TOEFL scores, and they're going to look at your grade point average, or perhaps at what your class ranking um, what, that you graduated with from the University of Cartoon, or that you've achieved so far throughout your study. Um, they're also going to be looking to see whether you have teaching or research experience. Um, when we're talking about higher education in the U.S., you're going to be expected to contribute to your field. So gone are the days where you're memorizing what everybody has done in the past. Now you are a contributor. Now you are advancing your field, and you're going to be expected to add something original throughout your master's degree program or throughout your Ph.D. program. So if you have research experience from the past, they'll believe that you're going to be able to hit the ground running to start right away when you start their program in doing research and becoming a contributor in your field. And then they're going to be looking at the application. And I can't stress enough how important the quality of your application is. If you cured cancer and made peace in Darfur, and you send in a personal statement that is grammatically incorrect, disorganized, really long, and completely unclear, they're not going to accept you. So you need to make sure that you package yourself in a way that convinces the admissions committee that you are worthy, and all of you are worthy. And maybe you have a weakness in your application, perhaps your GPA was a little bit low, perhaps you didn't get the greatest score on the GRE. You can use the quality of your application to compensate for that. You can write a really, really good, convincing personal statement, and you're going to draw the attention of the admissions officials and increase your chances of getting funding. So please don't discount how important this application is, and that's why you have to start early. People sometimes send me their personal statements and they say, okay, it's due tomorrow. Well, <laughs> that gives us absolutely no time to work on this personal statement. You need to take at least a month to write your personal statements, maybe two months, maybe three months. Um, and you need to also give time to study for the GRE. If you have a weak GPA, you better believe that if you get an awesome score on the GRE, the university is going to look twice. They're not going to throw your application to the side. They're going to say, okay, his GPA was weak, but wait, look at how good he did at his classes and his major. He was really strong in his major classes, and he got really, really bored in art, and that brought his GPA down. And then they're going to keep considering you for, for accepting <coughs> and for funding. So the application is very, very important. And I just finally want to mention one thing about the, the, um, the visa. So once you're accepted, once you've got funding, you have to apply for a student visa to study in the U.S. So what have you heard about the student visas from the U.S., or about visas from the U.S. Embassy? Come on, guys. I know you've heard things. <laughs> what have you heard about? It's not easy. It's not easy, right? Well, this whole process is pretty hard, but nothing good is easy, right? Getting a, getting a job that's easy to get is usually not fun. The job is usually not fun to do, right? So um, it certainly isn't easy to get a student visa, but there are certain eligibility requirements that you can be aware of that will help you um, prepare for your visa interview. And I'll, I'll talk about them in a second. But your visa interview is two minutes long, okay? You have two minutes to convince the consular official that you are a serious student and that you are qualified for the visa. Many, many people walk up to the visa interview and they say, here are my documents. And they don't effectively articulate that they are serious students and that they are qualified. They expect the official to go through all the documents and make the decision that they're qualified. The official isn't even going to look at your documents if you don't convince him verbally that you are qualified, okay, in two minutes. And you can do it. Because if you've completed this entire process that we just discussed, then you better believe you're prepared for your visa interview. Because you've already convinced an admissions committee that you're ready to study in the U.S. So the consular official should be no problem whatsoever at all. The consular official? It's fine, kid. <laughs> okay, let me finish in English and then I'll talk about it in Arabic. The consular official is looking for three things. They want to know you're a serious student. There's no way you get into a U.S. university with a scholarship if you're not a serious student. You need to be able to articulate why you chose the university you're going
going to and what you want to do after you graduate from the program. They also are going to want to make sure, number two, that you are not an intending immigrant, okay? So those of you who are going to ask me later how to get a green card, you're not a serious student and you are an intending immigrant, so you're not qualified for a visa, okay? Our goal isn't to steal Sudan's best minds. Our goal is to create a relationship with you and have you come back here and use the skills you developed in the U.S. so we can continue to have a relationship with you. So you can't be an attending immigrant because then we fail. Our mission fails. And then the third thing is you need to be able to cover the cost of your education. So you either need to show several, several months of bank statements that demonstrate that you have extra income for your education, or you need to slap down that fully funded scholarship loan scholarship letter and say, I have all this money and I'm going to study in the U.S. So those are the three things that you need to show. And it doesn't take long. In two minutes, you can absolutely explain that. So, and then, I'm um, going to ask that if you look at a lot of people. So, Study in the U.S. 
or we have enough money to send one Sudanese person for five years every year to complete a PhD program in the US. So what we've decided to do is send more people and develop relationships with more people and give a higher number of people that opportunity rather than funding full degrees at this time. Okay, so those are the steps to study in the US. Um, and I hope that you, got, you all are very successful in, in the whole process and that you are motivated and that you take the advice of the gentleman down here to really do your homework and start early um, and have confidence that you will be successful. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
the Kuno of Arab Swish, and you know, the Kuno of 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 the
de todo el rayado y la lenta, la que está más que mis ex, lo único que les han contado es con allí, con pues. Pues no, hay que tener nuestra querida que crece en el centro de mi casa, allá está queriendo, allá tú la has montado, ya. Hasta entonces, pues allá no te queda de nuevo, andas a faja, si quieres ver, ya no te lugares de Google. Y te va un cabo de tener más de mil a profetas de Google y lo que te dejamos a la patada, te digo que te la hago con luz. Vamos a ver qué son ellos. Yes. <laughs> 